Okay, so the first time I attempted to put a car from automation into SnowRunner was actually well over a year ago and I put that on hold. The main reason is, is I don't do well with material stuff. I just fully don't understand how any of this works. So instead of trying to learn it, I ended up, yeah, putting it off for quite a while. And that's what led me to that video where I went and tried it again, and this time actually succeeded. I mean, kind of. There was connectivity issues and we couldn't figure out why. But that aside, the reason I was able to try it again is because I started from a very basic stepping off point. Sure, it sucked at off-roading so much that even the slightest bit of off-road ended up being a problem for it. And if I touched anything like mud, instantly it'd get stuck. But it had two major advantages. One, well, for me, it was branding. I'd done this before. I'd used this exact model when I exported over to a set of Corsair instead. And number two, one's a little bit more complicated. As you can see, everything here is basically made out of 3D primitive shapes like this, all just basic shapes. And there's no car body. And that makes a very interesting point. It has no cutouts. And that's fairly important, but you're probably asking, what's a cutout? When you make a fixture for automation, it's just a 3D mesh. But how would you see that mesh underneath the skin of the body. If we switch this to 3D, you can see that you can't actually see all of it under there. Switch back to 2D and you can actually see that it cuts out the body along this line here to show it underneath. How would I transfer that over to SnowRunner? I didn't know, this is all material stuff. You can actually see how this works in what's called a cutout map sort of thing. When exporting a car to automation, you get this black and white cutout. Now this is not gonna work exactly over in SnowRunner, but I can utilize this and edit this image to work properly. And lucky me, whilst working on SnowRunner, I learned how to do this when making the taillights and headlights for the last vehicle. So I'm already at a head up, heads up. No, wait, hold on. Leg up, that's the one. English is my first language, I swear to God. So anyway, I am determined to this time make a new vehicle from automation into SnowRunner, but this time do so, so much better. And I have a lot of cars already, so let's go pick one out. I don't often do off-roaders, but we'll find one eventually. I mean, I could do something like this, that'd be fun. I could do a tractor, I've done many of those. Oh wait, we've got this guy. I do like this one a fair bit. Very basic, but also very cool. And because also, ugh, frustratingly, they only really seem to recognize right-hand drive cars. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go to the incorrect side drive to make them happy. Luckily the seats and everything could stay there, we're just gonna flip you to the other side. And hey presto, we're done. Now you're also gonna notice that there's no doors on here. That's because I used a lot of cutouts. Now the windshield itself is going to be needing to be a cutout, but this is also a cutout and uh, it's, it's, it's gonna be a challenge, but I reckon I know how to do this. So let's go ahead and export this. I do want to make sure that I have unbreakable fixtures because that's really only gonna be a beam and G thing. Though I suppose I could have made the bumper separate so I could have multiple bumper choices, but we're gonna still keep this rather separate. We're probably gonna also see if we can fit some things in the back here. So we might have to remove those seats some point but for now we're not going to have a pack down we're going to go ahead and export first things first we're going to bring it in and we're going to tidy this up we don't need tires and wheels though i would like to keep them but we're not going to we're just going to go with what they brung and for the most part this should be about ready to export why do we not have a front diff here? Like it's got the lead out to the front oh wait and also here's a good example we can still see the doors so the doors that are not meant to be there, we can see them still. Also for performance sake, we don't actually have any of these windows in. So we're gonna delete these so then the game doesn't try to render them at all, even though they're gonna be invisible. I could also theoretically select and delete all of the door stuff, but um, the way I did the cutouts, I think it'd be better if we save that for using the cutout map. Oh, I've already run into my first hurdle of working with these weird materials. If we have a look at the UV unwrap for this engine, it is a complete mess. So this is the square which usually will work within. 
And this is as big as it gets. Like, what the hell is that? But not only is this just like a random mess that doesn't matter particularly much, if we just go and select only the alternator, the alternator here is actually fairly smartly laid out. And then applied to the alternator, for some reason only, really the alternator being like the big one, it has three materials, one of which is this, which looks like it's made out of like MS paint or something. I'm not fully sure, but whatever. There is two other ones, but these ones are a little bit more technical related that I, 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 I don't understand. I don't get it. Why is this a hurdle, you may ask? Well, here's another thing about BMNG. There's basically two types of uh, UV unwraps. This is a UV unwrap here of the entire engine. But if we go to here, you'll see that there's two UV unwraps. And I don't know what this one is for. It's a complete, absolute mess. And if we select just the alternator once again, huh? Well, which one is the right UV unwrap? Well, I do happen to know that this is material 114 and in the main materials it gets exported, we could see that we've got these all in here, but which layer does it apply to? I don't actually know because usually if it's a, on a different layer, it'll tell me it's a different layer, but this doesn't say that. So I'm thinking that it's on the first unwrap and not the second. It's an alternator, who's gonna look that closely? I could just delete it and nobody would notice. So realistically, I don't know what we're doing here, but I'm gonna go with my instincts and get rid of the second one. Then we just gotta make sure that everything has the same UV names. Then when we bring the engine in to join up, they'll all be on the one UV unwrap. Even if the unwrap is a complete mess, it's all divided up against materials anyway, so we're not too concerned. I just went through the longest processing time ever trying to get this into SnowRunner, and I'm guessing it's because the humongous poly count, but we're about to try it out for the first time. All I have to do is kind of figure out where it is. God, I wish there was a search function here. Come on. But wait, hold on, not converted? I just, oh, don't tell me. Did it fail converting and just not tell me that it failed? Yeah, it fails converting, damn it. And that means something is amiss. Maybe it's the extra spaces I got in here, but let's try that out. It could be just a small little issue like that. Nope. Number of vertices or faces exceeding the limit of 65,000. That's what the problem is. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, let me just hide that. How am I gonna bring 300,000 down to that few? That's ins- that- <laughs> I don't think I can do it! I am un- You know what, for now, what we could do is start by getting rid of things we don't need, like these door cut- No, that's the entire vehicle. You know what, we'll select you, select you, control L, select you as well, delete vertices. That just dropped us down. Like a hundred, uh, only a hundred? Come on, really? I think I might have to lose the engine, but the engine itself is still only a hundred thousand vertices. That means I still have a few two hundred thousand more to go. Where are they even? Day two. I've done it. This is no small feat. I managed to get the whole package down to less than 65,600. And you may think, oh, well, good job. It's a lot more than that. There's been a lot that's been culled from here. I remade all of this tubing by hand. Oh, hold on. There we go. By hand. I've had to delete a bunch from the front bumper so the front bumper doesn't look great so much anymore. There's just... Oh, so much sacrifice has been put into this. The seats are new, as I said. Even this part here is new. I've tried to decimate the amount of vertices in there. There's so much work in. In fact, I've only just noticed now that this connects up to nothing. So let's go ahead and try using it now. Will it convert? Please. I, I don't know how long this is going to take. I have restarted my computer, but it shouldn't be that long to convert, right? I think it took some around 20 minutes. It converted already. Okay, it's done. Good. Okay. This could actually work for us. So if we go 
down. Wait, hold on, no. C for cheap. Oh, it's not here still. God damn it. Oh, wait, no. Here it is. Hey, it's under Mod Scout? I thought I changed the name of it, but does it spawn? No, hold on. D uh... Oh, dude, that doesn't look like it's converted properly. I, I, oh, so this is material stuff. We don't need that. Fill the steering frame. Steering frame? And bone steering missing. Same with mirror is missing. Left and right. Um, wait. If we go into classes trucks, I think there was something about mirrors. Okay, we have a few mirrors. And this is all cockpit stuff, so... Let's see if just removing mirrors fixes the issue. And, oh my goodness gracious, what the hell happened there? Does it steer? Hold on, can I use a control? Okay, so I can steer. What the hell? I have never seen... So, I, I'm not... Uh, very experienced with modding, but I have never seen anything like this happen before. That's so weird. All right, let's hit reload on it then. No, I don't understand. Uh, oh, you know what? No, the dimensions are different here. Four by two and mine is point. Uh, okay, so that's the problem. So let's go ahead and select you and then scale you up. I must have whoopsie daisied at some point. All object apply all transforms and get you back into place approximately. Then re-export you. And you know, I think we're going to go ahead and remove this. And then, under Mod Manager, convert it again and hopefully that will help us out. Now- OH! It's immediately back to working now. Fantastic. Okay. Why? <laughs> Why does it do that? Figured it out. Thank you very much to the people on the Discord from the The Modders Forum place. And Fred Sweeney, bro, you are a legend. Apparently, there was a bit of code in here, which was this, which shouldn't have been in there. I didn't put anything in there. I don't know how it got there. This is the same code that I was using on the last vehicle. It's... I don't get it. What is our new vehicle? Okay, so the wheels are not quite in the right place. Okay, so this should be exactly like a mod scout just <laughs> not perfect oh my goodness not perfect now apparently my suspension mesh is not showing up we'll fix that in a bit but let's see what the collisions are like so far this is doing a lot better jesus could you can you stop spinning please uh the seven was already failing here because it would just like hit anything and crash why is snow runner so afraid of speed i swear to god just play I'm, I'm trying not to overcorrect but it just it keeps wanting to tank slap on its own. And, oh, okay. That's going over here real easily. A lot better. But we haven't even reached mud yet. And... Okay. Yep, there's the mud. And we're stuck. Suspension high. And then I... Wait. Where's the diff lock option? If we go down here... I should have, yeah, mod scout, I should have diff locks available. But hey, with our uh, suspension now, we should be able to get through. Um, kind of. Dangerous water level, oh dear. How do I change my snorkel pickup? Because at the moment, it does have the snorkel height. Oh God, please, please go through. You also notice that none of my heads, uh, headlights are poking through. That's because we haven't done the uh, the materials yet, and it's also pristine white. Yay! Let's you know, let's get most of this, and we're gonna go straight to doing the materials for now. That's gonna be very tricky. So, for instance, if we bring out the cutout again, we'll see that this is black and white. But what I need to do is now take this and then turn it into, well, a, a transparency sort of layer because that's how it works. It's like a PNG. It just goes, if there's transparency, it has transparency, unlike BMNG, which for some reason needs a different transparency map and doesn't recognize just transparency values taken from an image. And that irritates me. I want the card to be red, so if we grab the fill 
Uh, and then how do I change the, oh, here's the color option. I'm gonna go like a very, uh, kind of deep red like that. I'd love to add a metallic value to this. Wait, what? Why didn't it? Uh, let's create a new layer maybe. Then on that layer, oh. Anyway, now we go ahead and select all of the blacks. All right, do we create a new, oh wait, no, hold on. We duplicate this layer, hide that layer, press delete on that. Now we have ourselves a transparency map and it'll be this lovely red color for the body. Convert our mod again, then go and find our cheapo, add that in. We'll see that that has worked. I mean, so we've got the normal map on there, annoyingly, but our headlights can now poke through along with all of the grills and vents. Now I'll have to do that is for all materials. And the amount of materials I have is, oh, oh no. Day three. Well, I am way past the due date on me having this recording done. So much work has gone into me, not only learning how to do this, but also getting this to this point now where it works. But I also added in lots of materials. So much went into this, Jesus. And even though I hate it, there wasn't many, but I did have to go through and make a whole bunch of things. Now, the lettering that was meant to be on the front of this vehicle that you may or may not remember by this point, because I really don't, is meant to be on the front. I can't seem to get it to work. Why? I don't know. J it, it just doesn't. So we're foregoing the letters on the front and we have our right on the borderline of 6,500 polygon things. My driver does look like basically a small kid or a munchkin sitting inside of this thing. It's, the scale's a bit off. Uh, I also don't have any pedals done, but also his feet don't move. So you know what? That's absolutely fine. We got this trailer set up. Now I had a bit of a, a weird one going on here. To start with, the trailer didn't line up, so we moved the tow bar from like where it's meant to be, which is like down here, up here. I moved this wheel up and then shrunk that down so then I could fit it in place, but this was still too high up. So I had to go in and change the offset here, which for some reason didn't work. So that took like four hours of me troubleshooting just to find out that the game just was having a bit of a brain fart and wasn't updating what I was telling it to update. <laughs> that is so infuriating. I, like I got to a point basically where I was asking some people, the game crashed, I relaunched the game and guess what? It worked. It, it just needed to restart the game. Well, we've done it. We now have a usable mod. Yeah, if I click on, it doesn't work. It just says it needs to mod dependencies. Uh, does it have an installed with a tick thing on next to the it on does. off button? Okay, relaunch your game and see if that fixes it. Oh, it's working. Yeah, it's working now. Okay, okay so I'm gonna try start to- Start the game up three times and then it works. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic, right? Leave garage? Okay, it seems to be working for me. Uh, if I go in and then try to invite you, no, how do I do this? Friends, yep, there you go. Play game. Yay! Okay. Connection was aborted because of the mods. You, you have just been subscribed. All mods have been downloaded. What? Uh, hold on. I think I can, um, I, I just realized I may have the 7 and 7 still installed. I will oh. try to... Disable that mod. Hey, there we go. Now we have it. Purchase and buy. All right, manage party. Invite you. There we go. Oh, we're in. Oh, you're in. All I can see is a mountain side. <laughs> what, what do you What do you mean? Oh, it went black. I could see a mountain side, and now it says connection lost. And oh my connection god. Lost. Yes, I'm in. Move to Black River. Move to the garage. Yeah, I, I'm in. Black River, yep. Okay, if you go to the, um, the, uh, you're in the garage, right? You can buy this car. You have to go into the, uh, purchase thing. Oh, oh, I see you. Oh, you're moving. Oh <laughs> my God. It's so much better than the yeah. last one already. So yeah, my game's this is- really laggy, but it's working. That's just the game. It really? Yay. Mine's running perfectly. Oh, I don't know. So- Maybe I need to lock the game to- Have you heard yeah, about yeah. some of the problems with automations exported to BeamNG? 
Um, no, actually. Okay. Well, one of the problems people have is the fact that they're really, really high poly when they get into BeamNG, like lots and lots of polys. Do you know what a normal poly count is for a vehicle? It must be in tens of thousands, right? It'd be in about the 100 to 200,000 range. Whoa, okay, Jesus. Yeah. So how much do you think this automation vehicle was when it first made it uh, out of automation? Um, 50,000? 10? <laughs> nope. If it was meant to be 150, this was 460,000. Oh my God. A hundred thousand of those were in the engine alone, which I ended up just deleting. I, cu I, ju I couldn't what? afford the poly count. But why? Is that a glitch? No, it's just the way in which automation does it. Automation is not meant to be a driving game. So the fact that they have no. an export at all working is amazing. And yeah, this yeah. had like way too many poly counts. How about instead, we just do a race to see who uncovers the most amount of map markers. Yeah, with a trailer or? No, no, without a trailer. Three, six, seven. There's eight checkpoint, uh, like a map uncovery thingy doos. Let's let's yeah. go. I'll uh, I I'm gonna go to the one that's closest because I I got the jump on you. Wow. I mean, um, from the interior view, it's like blinding looking through the windscreen. Oh, is it? Oh my god. Oh yeah, yeah, that is actually very dark. <laughs> I don't actually know where this first checkpoint is. Oh. Yeah, I don't, I don't like, like yeah. how. This game is like so afraid of going fast. Yes, driving on the road has always been bad. Eh. I wish they would fix that. That has been like one of my gripes since spin tires. Yeah, I mean, when <laughs> when you watch these vehicles, like these big trucks going down the road, they seem to be okay. They're like all over the road. I did see a video of like a British army truck though. They were tr <laughs> had this really like heavy load and it flipped over on a roundabout. So I'm guessing it's not the easiest thing to control at high speed, but. Just in a straight line, come on. Uh, how do I... Uh, diff locks? I don't... Wait, did I not put diff locks on? <gasps> yeah, you have to select diff locks in the, um, in the garage. Damn it. Oh, you know what, actually, no, no, I'm getting out of here. Uh, this is not, it's not going brilliantly, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying that my cheap made off-road car from automation put into BMNG and then into this game is not working perfectly? I don't think I put it, I should have put chain tires on here. Yeah, oh, I, I uh, I left the default tires on. This is a bit of a struggle. There we go. Okay, I've done one. Uh, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna go back and then I'm gonna try to... So it's gonna cost me a little bit of time to go back, but I think that's my best option. Oh my god. Is it really like this in Michigan? That's what I wanna know. <laughs> I've got the new tires on. <laughs> oh, I've just seen the 39 inch mud tires. Oh. Yeah, some of them don't fit. Oh my god, how are they this big? That's insanity. And they fit under the fenders, kind of. Yeah. This is, okay. If I can't uncover more with this, I'm gonna be upset. So we're I'm gonna the try to head towards that one. Cool and it's pretty thirsty. Uh, you do have the jerry cans on top. That is a yes. fixture which I made work. It was an annoyance to get working, but we got it working. Whoa. She's quick cool, She's quick! Fourth gear goes from like being really slow and then just massive torque and you're off. But that's, yeah, that's just kind of how the game works. I wish, so I had a look at the power and torque numbers and they're- yeah. They're not real numbers. They're just kind of like arbitrary values set for how the game s tries to simulate things. And uh, oh, so that, that's why I can't like create a proper power curve or anything like that. I think I've gone the wrong yeah. way. No. Nah. So I, I don't, I, mean, I, I don't think it's possible to like properly fully. I think I want to take a shortcut, but I'm not sure if I can make it, but I'm going to give it a try. Darting between the trees right now. I gotta say, so the these new tires, absolutely amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which one are they? 35? Uh, the 39, like... 39. Chonking. Like, they look like they could be paddle steamer wheels. Like... Oh dear, yeah. There we go, I got two. Where are you up to? I'm, I'm, I'm at 2-2. Two, 2-2. Two. Two, two. Oh, yeah. you're at 2 as well? Damn it. Yeah. I think this is the wrong way to go. <laughs> oh no. Eh. Oh no. Oh! Oh! This is very tip happy. Oh no, we've got it. Okay. okay. Third one done. Damn it. 
I've just got my third done. Well, at least I'm catching up to you a little bit. Uh, one more. Oh, this is so far away for me. It's pretty far away for you, but you've at least got... You've got nothing in the way. Damn it. In um, Mud Runner, there were some areas of the map you couldn't go if you had a trailer. Yeah. So you would have to find your way around or go the long way around or anything like that. Where the hell? How do I get up there? Oh, no. I'm having to go the wrong way and you're probably getting really close to yours. But it's so slow for the mud. Oh, wait, are you still running the default tires? Oh, okay, I might no, be able to I, do I'm this. The, I'm on the chained ones. Okay, well, almost the default ones. Is this where I want to yeah. go? That is where I want to go, good. So, oh, my God. tires seem a lot better off-road. This thing is just eating up the mud as if it was nothing. Like, it's getting so fast on the mud sometimes that I still get speed wobbles. Wait. No. Oh, well Damn it. And I'm so close. Well, I'm just going to finish mine off. There we go. All right. I've made it. Oh. Okay, there we go. Now it's uh, daytime. I mean, that Ooh. made my game absolutely. Ooh. <laughs> like, hello. Yeah, you're lagging out quite a lot. So, thank you, ah. Simulator Adventures, for joining me. I'm going to see no what the problem. damage model is like. Ah. Eh. Wow. Eh. <laughs> it's okay. But what, yeah, what, so... How, how I don't know. <laughs> uh, what, what are your thoughts? <laughs> um, I'm just amazed you can bring these things in this game. It's just a shame that this game has some limitations. Um, and it's a shame that I this mean, took me like three days to get working. Yeah, but or I two mean, and a half. did get it working. Yeah, it was a little bit easier than last time, but there is a lot involved moving from something that is made out of 3D primitives to something that is made out of uh, this sort of thing. Anyway, Simulator Adventures, bro, thank you. thank you for being here. Guys, go check out his channel. He does lots of reviews and uh, sometimes just some experiences, kind of like what we've done here today. But for now, I'll catch you all. Wait, no, hold on. I have to thank my channel members. I have a good channel member now, top tier. That is... The Rogue Tick, the Crayon Priest. Thank you for being a top tier channel member. For the rest of you, catch you all next time. Goodbye.